Hey guys, and welcome back to the shop. So I'm having oxygen sensor issues again. Um, the passenger side oxygen sensor now is giving me intermittent errors with the Zetronic system. It'll stick low and then it'll stick high and it kind of goes back and forth, kind of annoying. And what I think is happening, this passenger side pipe is pretty straight right from down there to here. And I think what's happening is we're just getting moisture on the sensor and that's causing it to go out, go bad, whatever. Uh, on this side, you can tell we've got more of a bend. So the bend happens a little sooner. So I'm thinking maybe the moisture has a chance to settle out a little quicker. This is the passenger side O2 sensor and this is the driver's side. Notice how the driver's side has a lot more soot on it than the passenger side. I'm gonna take that as evidence that this one was getting a lot of water blowback from the motor whereas this one was not. And I think that's why this one went bad. So you correct me on my logic if you think I'm wrong or agree with me if you're right. Let me know in the comments what you think. And also you can tell, you know, they are getting pretty hot. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna make me some new one inch bungs. I'm gonna go up on top here, drill my hole, weld my bung in. And I wanna use a piece of aluminum to make a heat sink to go around the one inch bung. So I'm hoping the combination of relocating it to up on top of the pipe plus creating a heat sink for it, we can eliminate the two factors that kill oxygen sensors, which is heat and moisture. And if this turns out to be something that you guys are interested in, I would be willing to make some for sale. All right, guys, let's get to work on it. Let me know what you think. I do not have a 16 and a half millimeter drill bit, so we have to bore. We have an 18 by 1.5 tap.
right, so that's not going to work out. I guess we're going to have to pull the pipe. Not what I wanted to do, but what is necessary. And at least that way I'll be able to get a better weld on it on the top anyway. As much as I want to be good at TIG welding, I still suck at it. Okay guys, here's what I've come up with. Here's my heat sink. And of course my threaded bone. I'm gonna use anti-seize lubricant as my thermal paste. Cause this stuff is good to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna go crazy with it. Just a little bit of, there, of it on there. Just to help it transfer the heat. So I've got a nice chamfer on the inside here. Go over the welds. There we go. Let's get it back on the car. Hey guys, here's my potential solution for O2 sensor failure. Now I have both oxygen sensors on top with my new heat sinks on there. See, there's about a hundred degrees difference between the passenger side O2 sensor and the driver side O2 sensor. So the heat sink will drop at about a hundred degrees. Measure the temp of your O2 sensors and they're well over 400 degrees, say closer to 500 degrees, then you may need one of these heat sinks because it looks like running temperature sits somewhere around 400 degrees. And I let the car idle for about 15 minutes just to get up to operating temperature. The fan was cycling on and off pretty regular, so I know it was at operating temperature. In my particular case, I don't need those heat sinks on this car as it is uh, messing with the computer just a little bit. If you drop those O2 sensors under 300 degrees, it appears that the uh, Zetronic system here starts to misread them or the voltage coming off the O2 sensors is a little misleading to the computer. So in my case, I'm just gonna leave the threaded bungs welded to the pipe and run it without the aluminum heat sinks. But if you guys are noticing your O2 sensors are over 500 degrees, then you can see based on this test that these heat sinks do drop at about 100 degrees. So there you go, guys. If this is something you're interested in, head over to thisoldfarmshop.com and they will be available in the near future. All right, guys, thanks for watching.